Project Guru. 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 Всем привет! С вами Зак Новак на радиостанции Новорусия Rocks. Welcome to Novorussia Rocks Radio Station. This is Zach Novak, your American in downtown Donetsk. The program is called Project Guru, and Guru is in the house as always. Andre, my engineer, as well. Let's get right to it. A proud day as the Donetsk People's Republic opens representation office in the Czech Republic. Representation of the Donetsk People's Republic, DPR, open in the Czech city of Ostrava, Northern Moravia on Thursday. Its main aim is to spread the truth about this so far unrecognized country, according to DPR's honorary counsel in Ostrava, Nela Liskova. It is the first DPR representation in the European Union, she said, adding that the Donetsk and Ostrava were twin cities which were linked with traditional bonds of friendship and cooperation. That is why it is not at all accidental that Ostrava has been chosen as a place for the representation. We will contribute to the expanding contacts between the DPR and the peoples of Ostrava and the entire Czech Republic. We will also help promoting direct ties among legal entities. Liskova, who also chairs the Czech public organization People's Militia, said she was sure that the representation will contribute to establishing and developing DPR's international cooperation in culture, scientific, social, and economic spheres. She added that the representation would also organize the delivery of relief aid to the DPR population. The DPR representation, according to Liskova, has been registered in the Czech Republic as a non-commercial organization, which in fact is a representative center. One of its tasks is to seek the earliest international recognition of the Donetsk People's Republic. A proud day for DPR. Gusever, Romanian hacker, sentenced to 52 months in U.S. prison for unveiling Hillary Clinton's emails. Marcel Lazar, the 44-year-old Romanian hacker known as Gusefer, was sentenced to 52 months in prison today by the U.S. federal court for a string of hacking incidents which centered around high-profile U.S. political figures, including former President George W. Bush and Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Lazar's primary claim to fame was unveiling Clinton's use of a poorly secured private email server for official business while Secretary of State, a fact which sparked a protracted FBI investigation investigation and considerable criticism of Clinton for security lapses, though she was ultimately not charged with any crimes for doing so. Lazar's lawyer said his motivation was to bring to light the action of public officials, especially those connected to the defense and intelligence sectors. They had urged leniency on the grounds that he did not financially profit from anything he did. The U.S. government, however, had pushed for particularly harsh sentencing as a way to establish how unacceptable hacking into officials' computers was for any reason. The court ruling reiterated that no hacking of such computers could ever be tolerated. So here we go. Gusefer, Romanian hacker, not Russia. Interesting. Guru Andre, listen to this. Over 400 killed by cluster bombs in 2015, more than a third of them children. More than 400 people were killed by cluster bombs in 2015, most of them dying in Syria, Yemen, and listen to this, Ukraine, which have not repeat, not signed up to a treaty banning the weapon, an international anti-cluster bomb coalition said on Thursday. Cluster bombs dropped by air or fired by artillery scatter hundreds of bomblets across a wide area which sometimes fail to explode and are difficult to locate and remove, killing and maiming civilians long after conflicts end. They pose a particular risk to children who can be attracted by their toy-like appearance and bright colors. 2015, cluster bombs killed 417 people, more than a third of them children, the Cluster Munition Coalition said, adding that the actual number of casualties was likely to be much higher. The suffering is still continuing and civilians continue to be the predominant victims of cluster bombs, said Jeff Abramson, Program Manager at Landmine and Cluster Munition Monitor, which is part of the coalition. Unfortunately, now we're seeing a new spate of people being injured at time of attack, which is something that needs to be condemned very strongly. 
Abramson did not give figures for 2014, saying data was constantly being revised due to difficulties in gathering it, especially in conflict zones like Syria. The majority of cluster bombs casualties in 2015 were in Syria, 248, followed by Yemen, 104, and in Ukraine, about 20, the coalition said in a report. None of these countries are signatories of the Convention on Cluster Munitions, which prohibits the use, stockpiling, production, and transportation transfer of the weapons, this including Ukraine. The convention, which came into force in 2010, also requires the destruction of stockpiles of cluster bombs and clearance of contaminated areas. Since August 2015, five more countries, Colombia, Iceland, Palau, Rwanda, and Somalia, have ratified the convention, while Cuba also uh, bringing in the total number of states that have signed or accepted the treaty to 119 not including Ukraine. Casualties were also recorded in Laos, Lebanon, Afghanistan, Western Sahara, Chad, Cambodia, and Nagorno-Karabakh. The report was published ahead of the sixth meeting of states' parties to the Convention on Cluster Munitions that will be held in Geneva, September 5th to the 7th. The U.S. fascist regime announces more sanctions due to bridge construction from Russia to Crimea. The U.S. Treasury Department fascist Treasury Department today announced the addition of a number of companies to their list of sanctions related to the Crimean Peninsula, this time going after companies involved in the construction of the Kirsch Strait Bridge, which links the peninsula to Mother Russia. This included multiple Russian bridge building companies and several subsidiaries of OAO Gazprom. Eleven Crimean officials were also sanctioned over the construction, which intends to build $3.2 billion bridge spanning 19 kilometers. The Treasury Department insisted this showed they continue condemning Russia's violation of international law, supposedly in violation of international law, and we will continue to sanction those who threaten Ukraine's peace. The U.S. objects to Crimea's 2014 secession from Ukraine and its accession into Russian Federation. Guru Andre, listen to this. At the same time, the bridge plant was initially initially made between Russian and Ukrainian officials way back in 2010. Ukraine only withdrew from the bridge construction deal in late 2014 after Crimea had already seceded and primarily with an eye toward doing economic harm to the peninsula. Russian officials have not commented on the new sanctions, but it is doubtful the sanctions will have any impact on the plan. Crimea is Russian. Over 4,000 killed and 658 wounded during the month of August in Iraq. 4,245 killed in Iraq during the month of August. 4,245 people were killed, 658 were wounded during August. In comparison, July's figures were 2,695 killed, 1,352 wounded. These figures are only estimates. Due to the nature of the conflict, precise numbers are unavailable and the true numbers may never be known. At least 678 civilians were killed, 493 more were wounded in attacks. The number of wounded is likely to be higher. Okay, now a quick rundown. One British national was killed and another was wounded in a demining accident. At least 13 members of the Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, were killed in Turkish cross-border operations. Four Turks were killed and nine were wounded when the PKK launched a cross-border mortar attack from Iraqi territory. Iraq executed 47 people on terrorism charges on three separate dates. More, more, more. Listen to this. Security forces lost 134 personnel and another 100. 41 were wounded, but these figures are undoubtedly too low. Accounts from a cemetery in in Najaf suggest that the Shiite militias alone could be losing about 100 members per day. About 3,416 militants were killed and another 115 were wounded. Those figures were mostly reported by the Iraqi government, which could be exaggerating the numbers or even counting civilian deaths as militant ones. However, large-scale operations in Khalidia and Kayada must have left significant casualties. In other news, Human Rights Watch issued a warning that children in their mid-teens are being recruited by Sunni tribal militias to fight against the Islamic State. Kosovo and Montenegro border deal postponed. 
Kosovo's government on Thursday withdrew a controversial draft law on border deal with Montenegro, saying a vote on the measure would be postponed indefinitely. Prime Minister Issa Mustafa told lawmakers that the measure had been withdrawn because of the tension surrounding the issue. This is not the situation in which we should discuss and vote on the law for ratification of an agreement with Montenegro. Today, the government withdraws this law from the agenda and parliament procedures. Mustafa insisted this not mean that the government will change or renegotiate the agreement. He announced the postponement after deputies from Kosovo's Serb minority failed to attend the session. About 2,000 protesters led by the Self-Determination Party, a staunch opponent of the measure, gathered on the streets of the capital, Pristina, ahead of Thursday's parliamentary session chanting, border agreement will not pass. Mustafa's announcement was met with the cheers of victory and down with the government by protesters. Opponents of the proposed deal say Kosovo would lose thousands of hectares of land. Demonstrators held posters reading, we do not want land for Montenegro. We do not give land to Montenegro. The European Union has made border demarcation with Montenegro a condition for Kosovo to secure visa-free travel. Kosovo's opposition deputies who used tear gas at the parliament and have organized violent protests in the streets in late 2015 has said the deal would give Montenegro some 8,000 hectares, a claim rejected by the government and the United States, Kosovo's strongest ally. But please, everyone, understand and remember, Kosovo is Serbia. Hey, everyone, that ends our program. As I stress always, be safe out there, stay on alert, and have a great, great weekend. See you back on Monday. Bye-bye, folks.